Here we are at the letter R, closing in on the end of the alphabet. This is another instance where I had no suggestions yet, so I decided to make use of my Chinese beast theory for once, hitting it up for a weird creature. I was not disappointed. Behold the raucous bird, or Shao. Before we get into the nitty gritty though, I'd like to announce something. The channel's been getting close to 200 subscribers, but there isn't really any place I could engage with any of you beside the comments. To rectify that, I did make a Discord channel where we can discuss anything from monsters and world building to shit movies. I'll plan a few things to make it worthwhile, like voting on the next monster or subject I should tackle, so if you are interested or want to tell me personally how wrong I am about something, simply click the link in the description and I'll be there to change your mind. I mean about me being wrong, not the interested part. Anyway, let's get back to the raucous bird. It is described in quite a few ways, only one of which is likely to be correct. There is a monkey with an identical Chinese name, Xiao, which is likely partly to blame for the confusion. This beast resembles a Yu ape with longer arms and is good at throwing things. It has been translated as the noisy ape, which already points out what Xiao might mean, but we'll get back to that later. The bird, on the other hand, is presented in quite a contradictory manner. I've already showed an image of this animal, which depicts it as having four wings, one eye and a dog's tail. This is all well and good, however the underlying text also compares it to Kuafu the Boaster. Now, I won't get too heavily into this myth, as it is largely not related, but Kuafu was a giant that wished to catch the sun, chasing it to where it set. He never succeeded, however, as after a while he grew thirsty and stopped at the Yellow River and the Wei River. He was a picky drinker and did not like their taste, so he decided to hop on over to the Grand Lake to quench his thirst. He never made it, dying from dehydration on the road, and the stuff he threw on the ground became the dank forest. Kuafu is depicted as a human with a few snakes around him, no wings, no cyclopean features. In the commentary, the word is also likened to a lifter, or Yufu, another Yu ape like creature, which has tiger and leopard markings on its arm, and, you guessed it, is good at throwing things. It is theorized that due to the similarity of Kuafu and Yufu, this is merely a mix-up, but it still does not explain why the aberrant little bird is likened to a giant. However, all of this information comes from a single source. Well, not quite a single one, but it's quite complicated. The Shanghai Jing, or guideways through mountains and seas, is a very ancient collection of flora, fauna, landmarks, geographical elements, minerals and deities recorded by the Chinese. It can roughly be dated back to the 4th century to the 1st century BCE. No authentic version of it exists today, but it has been copied, reprinted, edited, translated and commentated upon countless times. However, the information it contains is very old, even if it was altered throughout the years. In fact, when Emperor Ming of the Western Han Dynasty received a copy in 6 BCE, it was already had as a relic of forgotten knowledge. Also, the oldest surviving version with illustrations was created in 1597, a set of woodblock artworks, so it is comparatively fresh. As a result, anything the guideways contains is prone to have been altered, misinterpreted, mistranslated or mixed up over the millennia. As such, we can do little better than to choose the most logical version, which marries both the text and the picture. Description is not all though, there is also the name. Raucous bird it was translated as since Shao means many voices or noise. Indeed, it is mentioned to have the sound of a magpie. Also, we cannot miss my favorite part of every Chinese beast. This is the section where they roll some dice and consult the chart. Two threes and a seventeen. This means you have to eat it, which will cure abdominal pain and stop diarrhea. Yep. Even the four-winged, one-eyed, dog-tailed magpie has a place among the totally not just a scam traditional medicines ripe for overhunting. Just the way I like my animals, perched on the precipice of extinction for a quick buck. Not to say the raucous bird ever existed and was thus hunted. There was, or likely is, an animal that inspired ancient Chinese to record a show in their texts. It is very likely that it was not something with four wings and a single eye though. However, this is where I come in. Not only do I recite the myths, I aim to refine them, bioengineering a realistic version of the raucous bird. Although to do this, there is a question we must answer. Were there ever animals with four wings? 
It seems like we end up here every other video, but six-limbed vertebrates aren't or weren't a thing. Although the description does not necessitate six limbs. You see, early in the evolution of avian dinosaurs to modern birds, there were species which could fit the bill. The most famous of these is the Microraptor, but other species like the Anchiornis, Pedopenna and Shautingia also seem to share its unique feature. Long feathers on the legs. Modern birds have scaly feet, with any form of feather cover being rather rare. There are a few examples, but none use it for flight. These little animals did, however, and there is a lot of debate surrounding this topic. First off, how exactly did this have their flight? And if it gave an advantage, why did it disappear over time? One theory that seems rather logical is that these feathers had the raptors glide, aiding their as of yet imperfect ability to traverse the air. However, as time progressed and their primary method of flight, their front limbs, evolved, the need for such a feature slowly dissipated. Think of it like training wheels on a bike. Since I emphasize that the guide vase is a collection of ancient knowledge, the question might arise whether the show is based on such an early bird. It is most definitely not. The book is not that ancient. Even if it contains knowledge from a few hundred years before it was written, it has no chance to have actually recorded animals that had gone extinct more than a hundred million years ago. These animals died before humans were a thing. Long before. The Guideways is home to many unnatural and weird creatures with many embellishments and impossible concepts. However, we do not need to adhere to the real world here. For our fictional yet realistic raucous bird, we can assume that at least a single genus with such features survived and later on evolved into our little abomination. Evolution is an interesting thing. Vestigial body parts, unique quirks can sometimes persevere, if the particular feature is not actively detrimental or there is no real need for the animal to better itself, rather ancient designs may remain unchanged. Famously, crocodiles barely altered their biology for quite some time, therefore it is not a huge stretch to imagine a world where a small raptor kept its training wheels, never really developing the aerial mastery of other birds. Perhaps it had little need for it, as a tiny creature filled a niche no other animal even attempted to take over. Alternatively, it lived in a densely foliated area where the semi-gliding flight it used to jump from branches to branches might have given it a slight advantage. Its design allowed it to use less calories to traverse the habitat than if it would have had to flap its wings every time. With that smidge of an edge, it carved itself a tiny piece within the ecosystem of the area. While we are at it, you might wonder what that area is. Well, fuck if I know. It is said to live by the Bridge Channel Mountain, where the Dry River emanates, flowing east into the Gizgate River. The mountain is located 350 li to the north of the North Rokas Mountain, which is 300 li to the north of Mount Govu. The guideways presents many location names that did not survive the centuries and the measurements were seldom accurate. As a result, it is practically impossible to determine where this bridge channel mountain is. When it comes to Chinese geography, I'm not even nearly knowledgeable enough to attempt to decipher the clues. But hey, if you happen to be an expert on the subject, please do tell me where it is in the comments or in the Discord channel. Please do join, I don't want to be alone there. The only usable information we receive from the guideways concerning the region is that there are supposedly no plants or trees on the mountain. We can assume that this is not entirely correct, it is likely to have been covered by at least some minimal vegetation. The drawing shows rocks and a mountain river, so the densely vegetated idea is out the window. Well, not entirely, this could simply be one of the habitats for this creature, but I digress. Based on this, the raucous bird and its ancestors must have filled a unique niche, which likely revolved around either mountain rivers and streams or the scarce, high-altitude vegetation. Perhaps their second pair of wings were useful due to the strong wind currents, which enabled them to collide without much effort. So we have the material which we can mold into the raucous bird. Naturally, as all other avian dinosaurs have, this little raptor would also develop the characteristic features of birds. A beak, hollow bones and the like. What about the doctor though? Well, that would most likely be a pompous bouquet of tail feathers. This feature is not uncommon among birds, with animals like the peacock or the bird of paradise showcasing the most extreme examples. 
thin little feathers with relatively stiff paces could easily replicate the look of a doctor. However, the single eye is more of a problem. A cyclopean disposition is problematic in more ways than one. First, it is only a detriment, costing the creature its ability to effectively see depth and losing a large chunk of its vision. Also, if it was to lose that one eye, that's the end of it, blind means dead. As a result, there is no way that would ever evolve on any animal, especially not after it has already acquired two. Ergo, we need to find a different approach. Coloring. The lamest of backup plans I know, but hear me out. As you can see on this depiction, the bird has a darker coloration on its body, but its head is relatively bright, with a contrasting neck, top and bottom. Well, we can easily take the orca approach. At first glance, it can be assumed the white spots mark the eyes. Here's what we'll do. The bird has a brownish tail to make it pop out more, but the body is black. On top of its head, the shell has a white mark with the small black spots in the middle. Yes, the perspective is a bit shifted, but anyone seeing the raucous bird would be forgiven to think that it has an eye on top of its head. It's practically complete. One thing to add though is that the bird would sound like a magpie, as stated in the text. There is no problem with that. As per usual when it comes to Chinese medicine, the animal's meat would not cure anything but hunger. However, this could mean that it would be frequently poached, perhaps even extinct by now if it had low population numbers to begin with. It lives somewhere in China and has been mistakenly likened to an ape with a similar name. That is practically it. A neat little fragment of ancient Chinese folklore brought to life. Again, I'd like to plug the Discord channel one last time. You can ask me anything there or tell me how insensitive I am when it comes to the medicine of charlatans. In the next episode, which will cover the letter S, I'll be tackling another suggestion that was made a while ago. I do hope who made it still watches the channel. Anyway, that's all for now. See you next time. Bye!